As gaming progresses, one of the biggest challenges is bringing those classic games forward, which is the purpose of emulation. See, emulation is the single biggest reason people say PC has unlimited backwards compatibility. And yes, this includes the Steam Deck. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass. I think this is an episode that a lot of people wanted to see, that is, emulation. It's not unreasonable to think that the Steam Deck is just limited to Steam games, or even just PC titles in general. But with emulation, you can run far more than just PC titles. And of course, for the purposes of game preservation, emulation is one of the most important developments in all of gaming. When it comes to emulation, there's only one recommendation I can make. Emu Deck. Emu Deck is a tool designed to help you get your Steam Deck set up for emulation. Emu Deck is not an emulator in and of itself but it does help to download and set up emulators. Yes, you could set emulation up and it wouldn't be too difficult to do it manually, but EmuDeck is so easy to use that I can't think of a single good reason not to. Setting yourself up for emulation using EmuDeck is so easy that you almost don't need a tutorial for it. But for completeness sake, I'll do one anyways. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and spread the good gospel of high tech lowlife. I've also got a Discord server too if you'd like to join. Like with most Steam Deck tutorials, you'll need to go into desktop mode. You can do this from the power menu. Just press switch to desktop. Now that you're in desktop mode, you can begin the installation process. Go to your browser of choice and go to the Emu Deck website. The website tells you everything you need to know about installing Emu Deck and what Emu Deck actually does. But most importantly, you can download Emu Deck from their website. Press download and you'll be taken to a download page. Emu Deck isn't just for SteamOS now, you can also have it on regular old Linux or Chimera OS. And the Windows version is now in beta. But since we're on a Steam Deck, we're going to do Steam OS, and it should download to your desktop. So what you want to do is run the emudeck.desktop file. By default, it should download to the download folder. When you double click it, it'll ask you if you want to run the program. Go ahead and press continue, and it should run. This little desktop file is connected to the internet, so you don't have to reinstall emudeck whenever it gets an update. So as you can see here, it's now time to set emudeck up. Do you want to do easy mode or custom mode? Custom mode allows you to customize the installation process to your heart's desire, whereas easy mode kind of just automates the entire thing for you. For the purposes of being a beginner tutorial, we're going to select easy mode. Next, it'll ask you where you want your ROMs to be. You can have it in your SSD or on an SD card. Regardless of what you select, all of the emulators and stuff will be on your SSD. So for simplicity's sake, we're going to select internal storage. Next, it'll ask you what device you want to install it on. Obviously, we're on a Steam Deck, so we're going to select that. If you have an Ambernic Win 600, you can select that device. But for most users, you will be selecting Steam Deck. Go ahead and press finish. As you can see here, the installation process has begun. During the installation process, Emu Deck is downloading all of these emulators. Some are from the Discover app, and some are just random flat packs. It also installs Emulation Station DE, but honestly, I don't really use Emulation Station. This process may take some time, so I would recommend charging your Steam Deck up. So as you can see here, when it's done installing, it'll let you know what emulators were installed. Now let's talk about the emulators installed by default. You've got RetroArch for most systems. You've got PPSSPP for PSP. You've got Citra for 3DS. You've got Yuzu for Switch, Emulation Station Desktop Edition, Dolphin for GameCube and Wii, Duck Station for PS1, PC SX2 QT for PS2, Zemu for Xbox, Vita 3K for Vita Emulation, Prime Hack for Metroid Prime Trilogy, Melon DS for DS, RPCS3 for PS3, Cmu for Wii U, and Scum VM for, well, older point and click adventure games. The types of games I never grew up with. So now that we got that out of the way, Emu Deck will automatically prompt you to add your own games. You may be asking yourself, how does it do that? Well, it asks you to do that via a USB flash drive, but I don't have a USB flash drive readily available with all of my ROMs, so we're going to worry about that later. And if you don't have one either, you can press skip for now. Now you're done installing Emu Deck. Now when you try to install Emu Deck once again, it'll take you to this screen instead. So here you'll see a number of different settings here, a number of different tools. We won't go over all of them, but we will go over some of them. If you click on manage emulators, you can manage your emulators, you can update them, or you can uninstall them. It even tells you what biases are needed and what you're missing. You can either reinstall the emulator, uninstall it, update it manually, or even reset configuration. In the quick setting menu, you can change certain options. All of these are options available within 
within the emulators themselves, but changing it here is a little more convenient. You can change things like aspect ratios. You can also change things like game borders and bezels. You can even add CRT filters. You can also change if a game auto saves when you exit out of the game automatically. Next up is a compression tool. The compression tool is generally speaking very useful for systems that are disc based, you know, PS1, GameCube, Saturn, Dreamcast. PS2. You can choose to compress individual games or compress entire libraries of games. Like for example here, in my PSX folder I have Symphony of the Night and Tekken 3, both of which will be compressed into one single file. There's also setups for multiple different utilities such as Steam Deck Gyro DSU. You can install it, but you need to create a pseudo password, which we won't go over this time around. Interestingly enough, there's an emu deck store. You can download homebrew royalty free games designed for these systems. They're made by amateur developers and and they're designed to run on real retro hardware. But for the purposes of this video, we're not going to cover them because, well, I don't have to. What is important to know is that these aren't commercial games, so you can download and play them for free. Now let's talk folder structure. So either on your SD card or on your SSD, it'll create two directories. One is emu deck. It's an important directory, but most of the time you won't be interacting with this. I would recommend just leaving the emu deck folder alone. Alongside the emu deck folder is an emulation folder. This is where your ROMs and BIOSes and save data would go. There's also a folder for stuff like HD packs which we will go over later. And of course, let's not forget about the ROM folder. As you can see here, the ROM folders are all separated by, well, all of your different systems. Every single system has its own folder. So yes, let's say you have N64 ROMs. Well, you'll want to put that in the N64 folder. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? And of course, we can't talk about Emu Deck without talking about Steam ROM Manager. Steam ROM Manager allows you to basically add your emulated games to Steam directly as their own entry. So by default, Steam ROM Manager looks like this when you install it through EmuDeck. This screen here is the parser screen, essentially allowing you to enable specific rule sets for adding things to Steam. In this case, all the parsers are set to different systems. In practice, this means you can add whatever system games you want to Steam directly. Do you want to enable all PlayStation games or Switch games? You can do that. Do you want to disable N64 or Atari games? You can do that too. You can also change the rule sets for the parsers, though not with this emu deck theme for some reason. So if you have your ROMs and stuff ready, you can press preview and then press parse and it'll parse all of the games out. Steam ROM Manager is also directly hooked up to Steam Grid DB, which is where all of this artwork is coming from. Also, Steam ROM Manager is configured out of the box, and as such, all of the different systems are categorized into their own different categories, so to speak. So as mentioned before, this pulls our assets directly from Steam Grid DB. But let's say Steam ROM Manager pulls out artwork you don't like, or perhaps the artwork's been taken down via a DMCA takedown notice. You can hover over a game and press the left and right arrows till you get a desirable piece of art that hasn't been taken down, hopefully. The art pieces are very much customizable, so you can select basically whatever box art you want. But I prefer my box art being more stock, I should say more similar to like the game's actual box art, you know? You'll also need to change all of the different art assets such as banners, heroes, and logos. You can do this by selecting the different artwork type you want to change. Yes, in its current form, Steam ROM Manager is pretty functional, but as someone that likes to have more options, you'll need to change the theme. My personal recommendation is for you to change this theme to something else. If you click on settings, you'll see what I mean. So click on settings and then go ahead and change the theme from emu deck to deck or classic. See, when you change the theme, there's like a million different options that didn't show up before. Now you may be asking yourself, why does this even matter? I just like having access to more options. That's why. There's also times when Steam ROM Manager will assign the wrong game title to your game. Like for example here, I have Sakura Tyson, but it gives you one of the later games in the series as opposed to the original. To solve this, you'll need to hover over the game and press the magnifying glass icon. You'll then need to search for the proper name of the game. So in this case, it's called Soccer Wars, despite the fact that the original Saturn release never released in the West. It'll automatically fix up all the game art assets for you. On the topic of Soccer at Tyson, we have to talk about multi-disc titles. You know, your Final Fantasy 7s or Metal Gear Solid 1s of the world. They have multiple discs, and at times, they may show up as multiple separate games despite being all the same game on different discs. I have a method to solve this. You'll want to create an M3U file. In the case of Soccer at Tyson, 
it's actually a two disc game. But what I like to do for multi disc games is separate it into its own folder. Inside the M3U file, you'll want to write down two to four lines depending on how many discs you have. Each line should represent each disc. And if you separate it into its own folder, you'll want to put the folder name first, followed by a slash. And if you do it correctly, everything should work. When you're finished setting up all of your R assets and whatnot, you want to press save to Steam so that you can save it to Steam. For most older systems, this should be enough. Now let's talk BIOSes, because a lot of systems from the PS1 forward do require some BIOSes. For like PS1 BIOSes or PS2 BIOSes, I can't tell you where to source these BIOSes from, but what I can tell you is that there's a great resource by the guys by an emu deck telling you what systems require BIOSes and what systems don't require BIOSes. Of course, applying the BIOSes is really easy. All you have to do is download the BIOSes, and then you put them in the BIOS folder. Some systems require you to create a folder where you put your BIOSes, such as the Dreamcast, and some systems like the PS3 and Nintendo Switch have a more involved setup process, of which we will be covering in part 2 of the emulation. And for those wondering what this game is, this is a Sega Saturn game called Astal. I don't think I've met a single person that's ever played this game aside from, you know, my brother and I. As a kid I really liked this game, but now playing it, it just kind of seems okay, I guess. I will say the visuals held up really nicely, and I figured now was a good opportunity to talk about Sakura Tyson, which is one of the few Sega Saturn games that came on multiple discs. It's an interesting title, it's like 75% visual novel and like 25% strategy RPG. Kind of like modern day Fire Emblem, but like more skewed in the dating sim aspects. What is interesting is that you don't have a lot of time to select dialogue choices, so you have to answer basically immediately, like maybe 2-3 to three seconds to answer. More visual novels should do this. And yes, as stated before, this is a multi-disc game. You can go to the quick menu and then change the disc out if so desired. You can access all disc controls by going into the disc control menu and then swapping out the discs. As you can see here, when you press load new disc, it'll show you all of the discs that you have available in that playlist file. Only discs related to Sakura Tyson and nothing else. So yes, this covers it for emulation part 1. Why not do everything in one video you might ask? Well, it's simple really. I didn't want to make this like an hour long video and so it's better if I split parts now. Besides, for like Super Nintendo or Nintendo Entertainment System games, or even like, I don't know, the Sega Genesis, you can already play games so long as you supply ROMs. And to answer your question, no, I won't tell you where to get ROMs because ROMs are never more than a Google search away. And also because I wouldn't be a very good content creator if I told you where to get ROMs now, would I? Huh? If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.